A very warm welcome to all the listeners of the Med Synapse podcast series on dermatology. Dermashort's podcast focuses on the latest clinical and research developments in dermatology. Today's podcast episode focuses on the trial, titled Efficacy and Safety of Bimkizumab in Moderate to Severe Hydrodenitis Sepurativa, published recently in the Journal of the American Medical Association, Dermatology. A chronic, recurrent, and debilitating disease, hydrodenitis sepurativa has a prevalence rate of 0.03% to 1% across the globe, with an early onset age of 22 years. Patients often have a low quality of life due to enduring pain, deep-seated inflammatory nodules, and abscesses in the sensitive areas of the body. Treatment for this skin condition has always been a challenging task for the dermatologists. Limited treatment regimens are available, and not a single of these are found to be effective for the patients. Past studies have identified interleukin 17A and interleukin 17F as drivers of inflammation. Thus, bimkizumab, a humanized, full-length IgG monoclonal antibody, selectively inhibiting both interleukin 17A and interleukin 17F, was tested for its safety and efficacy for hydrodenitis sepurativa. A randomized double-blind phase 2 clinical trial was conducted at sites across North America, Europe, and Asia-Pacific regions from September 2017 to February 2019. It included a 2-4-week to four week screening, 12 weeks of treatment, and a 20-week safety follow-up period after the final treatment dose. A total of 167 participants were screened for stable hydrodenitis sepurativa, with two or more lesions in distinct anatomical areas, total abscess, and inflammatory nodule count of 3, a C-reactive protein level greater than 0.30 mg per deciliter. Based on this, 90 patients enrolled themselves in this trial. 88 participants received at least one dose of study medication, as well as completed the full analysis and safety set. Patients were randomized in a ratio of 2 is to 1 is to 1, in order to receive 320 mg of bimkizumab every two weeks, placebo weekly from week 4, or 40 mg of adalimumab weekly from week 4. Out of the 88 patients, 46 received bimkizumab, 21 received placebo, and 21 patients received adalimumab. From this trial, it was observed that the baseline characteristics were similar across all the groups. The primary efficacy endpoint was measured as the proportion of participants achieving a hydrodenitis sepurativa clinical response. This response is defined as a 50% or greater reduction from baseline in the total abscess and inflammatory nodule count, with no increase from baseline in abscess or draining fistula count at week 12. This was reported in 57.3% in the bimkizumab group and 26.1% in the placebo group at week 12. Almost 46% of bimkizumab treated patients achieved a 75% reduction in the total abscess and inflammatory nodule count, whereas 32% achieved 90% reduction in the nodule count. None of the participants in the placebo group achieved 90% reduction in the count, whereas 35% of patients achieved this response in the adalimumab group. Significant improvements were observed in the International Hydrodenitis Sepurativa Severity Score at week 12, with bimkizumab as compared with placebo. Serious adverse events occurred in 4% of bimkizumab-treated participants, 10% of placebo-treated participants, and 5% of adalimumab-treated participants. In this clinical trial, Bimkizumab treatment, as compared to placebo, demonstrated clinically meaningful and consistent improvements across all assessed outcome measures. One limitation of this trial was a numerically higher baseline abscess and inflammatory nodule count observed in placebo, as compared with the bimkizumab and adalimumab groups. Though a limitation, the baseline count for bimkizumab-treated participants in this study was consistent with those for participants in the other trials such as Pioneer 1 and 2 studies. Based on this trial, we can conclude that the dual inhibition of interleukin 17A and interleukin 17F by bimkizumab may be a considerable and viable treatment approach for hydrodenitis sepurativa. Larger phase 3 studies are needed to warrant confirmation about the safety and efficacy of bimkizumab.
With this we conclude today's Derma Shorts podcast. Thank you for listening and being part of the largest community of doctors.